In this one, let's explore the concept of a kink on a graph and then see what the effect is on the slope. So this is a kind of common thing that you encounter in calculus. You're given a curve of some kind, you can compute the value of the derivative, which is essentially the slope at a point. But there's a little bit of a technical detail that says that the curve should be smooth. Then let's see what happens when the curve is not smooth. So here, I have this pink curve. And I know it looks like a sequence basically of straight line segments. So what I want to do for a second before we do anything else is just zoom out. Okay, let me just zoom out so you can see what it looks like overall. You see? So that's the entire thing right here. See that? It kind of looks like that. And even another thing they can do is change the view and the axes this way. And you see what it looks like? So this is what it looks like from a distance, so to speak, over a larger set of x and y values along the axes. But let's zoom back in because that's where the interesting things happen. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to zoom in on a tiny portion of the graph where the kink in the graph occurs. So let me adjust the axis again. Just so you know, this is a video for those who are kind of interested in some of the deeper mysteries of mathematics. And we can discover some of those by zooming in to a fine level of detail and seeing what happens. So let's take a look. I'm going to enlarge this even more still. And now, look up here first. I'm going to draw a little slope triangle. So this is my slope triangle. And I'm going to put it over here. Let's zoom in on here. In that yellow box, you see the value of 1.4. That is the value of this red segment that goes from the blue point over to the red point. You see? Everywhere along here, as you can see, the value is the same. It doesn't matter where I put point C, it's 1.4 is the value of the slope. So it's 1.4 in that location. The value of the slope is 1.4, 1.41. Okay, it changes, but very tiny, very incrementally along this. And notice that as I zoom in, you see that the curve really becomes a straight line. That's another important aspect of essentially what powers calculus. When you zoom in to a very fine level, even a crazy curve begins to look like a straight line. And here, as you can see, it's 1.41, 1.41. That's the value of the slope. It changes, but very, very slowly. So you can, you can see here from left to right, as you look at that pinkish line, that is basically a zoomed in version of our graph. And it looks like a straight line. So pretty much doesn't matter where you go. Let's say over here, I'm going to zoom in again. That's a value of two for the slope. You see it's about the value of two everywhere. See that? When you zoom in close enough, you have a basically a constant slope of two. And the slope, when it does change, take a look. You see it changes, but very slowly, correct? Like slightly to the right of this, you have 1.99, 1.97. But again, that's because if I zoom in closely enough still, take a look right here, then it stops changing. It's pretty much the same constant slope value of 2. See that? And it doesn't matter whether it's the point is on that side or the point is over here, you see? On either side of point A, please look carefully, that's really the key here. On either side of point A, so when the point C is to the left of A, as you can see, the value of the slope is 2. And when point C is to the right of point A, the value of the slope is still 2. You see that? But now, let's see what happens that I kink. The kink is kind of more interesting. So let me zoom back out and let's go over to a kink. First, let's take a look at this first kink. I hope you saw that already, but I'm going to study it very closely. Take a look. So for this first kink on the graph, I'm going to first zoom in to a very fine level of detail. And this first one, take a look, slightly to the left of the king, okay? So I'm going to put point A over here. And now look, slightly to the left of the king, the value of the slope is 39. You see that? It doesn't matter where you place point C, the value of the slope slightly to the left of the king is 39. If you put the point A on the king itself, take a look, right here. And you move point C instead. I'm going to zoom in more. You have to put it in the right place. You see how it's 39? So slightly to the left of the king, the value of the slope is 39. It doesn't matter where you are, it's 39. You see that? But then when you cross over the king to the other side, take a look very carefully. You see how it suddenly changes very drastically? Do you take a look one more time? So to the left, I'm going to zoom in even more. That's the whole beauty of the software. You can zoom in to insane levels of detail. Right? Take a slightly to the left of the blue point. The slope is always 39. But then you cross over the kink and you see how the slope suddenly changes. Look carefully. 39, 39, 39. And then it pops over to like 2.6. You see how it changes suddenly? 
down to about 2. So the kink, obviously, there's a very drastic change in the value of the slope. And you can see that just by looking at it, obviously, too. In other words, at that point right here, at the blue point, you couldn't really find the value of the derivative. Think about that, because there's a very sudden change in the value of the slope. So the point itself, although this is just an estimate, right? You see slightly to the left of it is 39, slightly to the right of it it changes very drastically, you see? And even if you zoom in, zoom in ever more finely, right? Like for example right here, see it's two the entire time, slightly to the right, and then right on the other side, allowing for the perfections of the human hand, it changes to different values, you know? So this is one other kind of king, take a look. Here the slope to the left and the right of the king is still a positive value, but then what I'm going to do is zoom on a different kink, in a completely different place, and we're going to discover a different behavior. This is why I like the software. You can zoom in and you can really explore things down to a very fine level of detail. So let me do that right now. Take our little journey to a different point on the graph. So, for example, let's see. I have choices. I'm going to choose the lower kink in the graph, okay? This one right here on the bottom. So let me move this over. And again, we need to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in to a very fine level of detail and make sure that things are in the right position. So I'm going to put this right here on the kink itself. And notice that when I compute the slope on the right side of the kink, it's about 38.14. So then you zoom in more still. I remember that people who developed calculus, they knew all of this without having this kind of software, right, to be used for exploration. It's pretty amazing, I think. So I'm zooming in, and notice that, again, to the right of this kink, the slope the entire time is positive 39, you see? As point C approaches point A, that is, as the red point approaches the blue point, the slope is 39 the entire time. And I'm going to zoom in even more still. You see, it's still 39 the entire time. But then, as you can imagine, look what happens as soon as you cross over to the other side of the kink. There's another kind of thing that can happen. Look, and I'm going to again zoom in even more. Take a look. You see here, to the left of the king, the slope is negative 35 the entire time. See? Negative 35. The slope, again, of the red line segment. But then as soon as you cross over to the right side of the king, the slope jumps to a completely different value that's positive and is equal to 39. You see? So here, you would say that at the point A itself, at the kink itself, right here. Let me zoom in even more. At the kink itself... You can find the value of the derivatives simply because when you approach, you see from this direction, that number 39 is the value of the derivative at each point, essentially. It's 39. It's the slope. And then when you jump over to the other side, look, right there, at the point itself, it's not even defined. It's just a giant question mark. And here, look, it's negative 35. Whereas at that point itself, it just becomes a giant question mark. And here, no matter how you zoom in, you can't get rid of the question mark. It's always present because here, again, to the right, it's 39. To the left, it's negative 35 at the point itself. It's not a defined quantity. You try to compute the slope. There is no slope to be found. It doesn't exist as a value. That's all I wanted to do in this one. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it's giving you some insights. I'll see you in another video.